Okay, um, now at this point, what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to read my article that I wrote as it was at Wikipedia about Dr. Charles Morton, but I'm going to stop at the end of Dr. Charles Morton's life, when, when his life ends. I'll just go over, brush over the details of his life, and then hopefully uh, from that, that'll set a foundation to go into more details about where I got the information, etc. And just to start, I'll just say most of my information came from two sources, and that's Google Books and Ancestry.com, and when I was done, I was very, very impressed, um, surprised at how well I got everything to fit together. And uh, so I'll just start out. So Dr. Charles Morton was born 1716 through 1799. The, the birth year of 1716 is in one part attributed to the entry in the Dictionary of National Biography that was uh, released just after he died. I think it was released in around 1806, if I've got that right. But it's so many references here that I don't know if I'm actually going to find that quickly and easily to, um, oh, sorry, 18, 1812 uh, by Chalmer, uh, also called Chalmer's Biography. Okay, um, let's see. Charles Morton, at the age of 20 or so, probably, yeah, age 20, uh, attended the University of Leiden. I I think I've touched that a little, touched on that a little bit in my last video. And then um, after that, after he did his doctoral dissertation, which is on the whooping cough, actually, and that, that's available if you look up De Tussi Convulsiva and, uh, and Charles Morton in Google, you'll find some of these entries. Unfortunately, they're not available to me because I don't have access to the subscription service that I would, would require to be able to use, to be able to get that, that record and, and look at it, but you know, it's written in Latin and it's basically going to be medical terminology about whooping cough, which is what, what I think I read somewhere, <laughs> is what that actually was, was covering. Um, okay, so right after he, he did his doctor dissertation, he seemingly moved to Kendall Westmoreland County. Now I do notice that was 1745. I do notice that, that you know that's about a 10 year span there. Um, and when I look at some of his grandchildren's uh, number of years they spent at Cambridge, we're talking not even four years, we're talking two years. So why it took almost actually um, since he got married in 1744, why well, took <coughs> well eight years almost to the day <coughs> to um, before he got married. By the time he entered, you know, I, I'm not sure what he was doing during that time of his life. I guess I'm not saying he took a long time. Just saying, you know, um, you know, we just don't know what he was doing at that time. But the first known thing is his marriage to to Miss uh, Mary Berkeley, who was, the le who was the niece of Lady Betty Germain. And um, I don't want to say with authority here, but I'm almost of the impression that uh, Lady Veer, who I'm going to mention in a minute, was a might have been a relation to the Berkeleys. I'm not sure. And I know that... Um, I do know that Lady Vere was either married or was a descendant of, I think it was Charles II, who had several illegitimate children, and also was uh, Lady Montague, uh, who lived in the home that was later to become the British Museum, and was the place where Dr. Morton also lived. Um, he lived at the British Museum in um, Twickenham. She was also a descendant of Charles II, illegitimately. He, he's surrounded by these people throughout his life. I found that very interesting, but I haven't really been able to make sense of it. I've already gone into the, the um, I think in my last video, a little bit of illusionary, or, you know, there's a lot of loose themes that kind of, or either illusions or they're 
<laughs> or they point to something that um, kind of points to him. It's kind of maybe, yeah, maybe came from a dissenter, dissenter's background in his ancestry. Again, the idea that his father was John Morton is only supported by an assertion that's made in the Dictionary of National Biography. And uh, you know that dictionary isn't perfect, especially when it names 1772 as the marriage date for between him and Lady Savile. And I, um, I'll point out another error that is even taking place in the latest edition of the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography, saying that that doesn't doesn't realize that Dr. Charles Morton actually married Lady Savile um, in 1767, thinks that he married her in 1772, therefore doesn't bat an eyelash to um, <clears throat> the, death in, the death record entry for a Mary Berkeley at Twickenham that, was, that would have been had he been married in 1767 uh, after he married Mary Wallace, not before, as misidentified as 1772. But I got into a little bit too much detail, and I'll probably get into that explanation, but I'll get to that soon. Okay, so he went to uh, the University of Leiden, <coughs> and he started there in September 18, 1736, and he got married the first time, Mary Berkeley, September 13, 1744, and they only had one known child. That was Elizabeth Morton, who married James Danzy. And they, she had several um, descendants through um, James Danzy. Also, James Danzy also had a son, and that son died um, before Dr. Morton died. And so Dr. Morton saw his grandson die or lived to see his grandson die. And then, um, just just as further note, uh, James, Liz Morton and James Danzy were the parents of Mary Danzy, who married John Freedom, Freeman, 1798, and Elizabeth Danzy, who married Richard Barnaby. Now, um, Collins Peerage says that Mary Berkeley died March 10, 1755, which makes more sense than the entry that's pointed out down there in Twickenham. Um, by the, Ox the current edition of the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography. And um, I haven't seen a corrob corroborating death entry for that death. I would expect that she'd be married, buried as Mary Morton, or be some mention of her marriage to Charles Morton in a burial record. But the entry they, they've picked for her, the other Mary Berkeley that was buried at Twickingham, coincidentally, the same place Charles Morton was living, and the Lady Mont Montague later lived. Um, it's it's just a fluke, um, as far as I know. Okay, now after now before Mary Berkeley died, apparently, if Collins Peerage is right, I don't know. Um, see, there's a big gap. See, Elizabeth Morton was born. May 26, 1745 at Kendall. That's his daughter, just about nine months after he got married. But um, if Mary, uh, there's, there's only record of one other, well, I haven't seen the record of, 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 a, of a son supposedly that he had that actually died very young. Um, but, you know, here we have possibly a 10 year marriage and only one child by it. It seems a little unusual for the times. Well, for Americans, at least at the time, more familiar with American families in that time period, they'd have they'd have one every year for till the till the mother was forty or so, even beyond that. Um, okay, so anyway, if Collins Peerage is right, I think that it says seventeen fifty five here, but it almost would make more sense to me. Uh, two other dates would make more sense to me. Uh, one date that would make sense would be um, just pure fiction. It would be sometime in 1746, for other reasons also that I'll get into. And But actually, the year that makes most sense to me is that she would have died in not March 10, 1755, but March 10, 1754. Because in June of 1754, Lady Veer, the wife of Veer 
blue clerk. If your blue clerk was a descendant of Charles II by one of his illegitimate um, lovers, I guess, and um, as was uh, <laughs> as was um, Lee Montague, so, you know, he's surrounded by two of these descendants of Charles II. The legitimate children of Charles II, nonetheless, but still, I found that interesting, but I couldn't find any connections there, but you know, I'm just mentioning it. Um, by, by that time, for whatever reason, um, Lady Vere, the wife of Vere Buclerc, wrote a letter of recommendation for Dr. Morton to, to, temporarily, take, to temporarily replace Dr. Conyers, who resigned from the Foundling Hospital. That, the, family, the fact that he worked at the Foundling Hospital is important. But also an important thing is a document that I discovered today, and if I don't know if I have it just readily available or not, and I don't want to waste too much time going through all this stuff, but I think I might be able to find it. But I wrote that here's one of them. This this one will prove to be interesting, but um, but not historically important for the timeline. On January 16, 1752, Dr. Charles Morton was elected to the Royal Society. That'll, that'll be important for his life because the Royal Society was integrally involved with um, the creation of um, the British Museum as a result of the will of Sir Hans Sloan. The British Museum was founded a year later in 1753, although Dr. Charles Morton wasn't involved, or I don't know for a fact that he was involved until 1756.